Yo, what's up guys? My name is Glock and welcome back to the letter. Sorry for the delay guys, I was out for a three-day trip in Malaysia for the PlayStation Experience event. So <laughs> I couldn't really record stuff or upload anything in my channel. But hey, we are back and I'm glad that you guys are still watching me play this. So um, let's put a recap on this. I, I, I kind of forgot what happened. But we're now in chapter 2 and we're now... In control of Hannah. Well, pretty much Hannah's perspective of everything. And uh, actually, I, for those who are curious as to what other endings you could get in Chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to think about it, but I don't think I'm going to show it to you guys. But I, ha I have seen it. Okay, I was really curious. There was this, um, what do you call it? This branching tree. It's pretty much a spoiler of what, what would happen. Okay, here. So... Okay, I'll just give you guys a rundown of what, what could happen, alright? There are three endings in chapter one. One could actually get you killed. I tried it out, alright? So, and another one kind of ends up semi-killed. And we have this one, we're which we're not really, really sure about. So we got the ending one. This is it. And then each chapter branches out to many, 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 many things. See that? So that's how awesome this game is. So that, so if you guys are still wondering if you should get this game, just fucking get it. Just get it, guys. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, we free up a schedule. And there's a common route, and we're now here. All right. So I think we just came from the house, actually. And um, when we were in the car with Luke, we kind of lashed out at him for some reason. So uh, here we are. Okay. Sick and hovering over the loo at 3 in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. A horribly fishy taste is left in my mouth as I throw up what I had for dinner, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The burning sensation at the, th at the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nausea come up on me when the door opens. Hana, what are you doing so early out of bed? I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. Hmm? That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Oh, shit. Is she pregnant? Is she? Oh, God. This is bad. Hannah is actually cursed now. If you guys remember during the last part, um, she saw the mirror and then she saw the freaking ghost girl there. And now, she is she pregnant? We're not sure yet. Let's see. Let's see. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see me like this. The last time I've had a horrible morning retching into a toilet was during my college years, being the life of the party. <laughs> Thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away months to frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from that time. Sure, they still know of me and I still know of them, and we still do business from time to time. But I've lost touch with anyone who I didn't see on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends I had when I was still in Hannah Evans, teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and old conquests like Jack. No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. Well, you still wear a freaking... What do you call this? <laughs> I'm disgusting. No, Hannah, dear, you're not. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair even as I cup up more fish. He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just stares. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Just feeling a bit <laughs> the under the weather, dear. <laughs> it's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? <laughs> I told you not to eat those sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. <laughs> you know, I'd, even though Luke is kind of like a douchebag to Hannah in a way, they're, they're, they still seem kind of cute together. I don't know. <laughs> he starts chuckling and soon enough he's in a fit of laughter. This scene happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. I try to stifle it though as I smack him on the shoulder. I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he will not stop laughing, I let myself go as laughter bubbles from my own throat and I forget whatever ill feelings played me. 
We're just husband and wife, laughing together at a funny face, the little things in life. I let myself go because I know these moments will not last forever. But if I just know the terrible things that are to come for us, I would have wished with everything I have then and there that the laughter stayed. Oh, did something happen? Oh, it's a foreboding uh, shit. Hiya! Come on now! It's October 26 already. Wow! Talk about fast forward. This is way past what happened to uh, Isabella and stuff. Okay, alright. The place is bustling with movers carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. Luke watches them like a hawk, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! <laughs> I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one of a kind commissioned paintings. <laughs> Jesus, guys, Luke is back. <laughs> one time you like, you kind of like Luke, and now you're back to hating him. <laughs> Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Shut the fuck up, dude. Luke, Jesus. Do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry buttercup. Right. Careful, that's a maho mahogany. No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. Whatever that is. I can see the exasperation, and I have to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Even Johans rolls his eyes as he goes by. <laughs> Considering Luke is always like this during a project, Johans and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before quickly going back to work. Everything just has to be perfect, exactly the way he wants it. Wants it. <laughs> one little thing out of place, one little thing that didn't fit in the image he clearly constructed in his head, and Luke's get Luke gets bent out of shape. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. Why is your butler so savage towards your <laughs> All right. Taking him by the hand, I lead him upstairs into our bedroom. This place has been arranged first so that we can get some rest, no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. I am definitely glad I can lie, j lie down on a soft, comfy bed after what has been a busy morning. Watching Luke act like his life depended on getting his move done is tiring, tiring all on its own. Mm, wow, look at this place. Kind of reminds me of Steven Universe, this picture, I don't know. <laughs> and to think I have a whole day of this ahead of me? Ah, I feel the bed dip beside me as Luke sits down with a sigh. Well, I can't wait for this to be over. I don't know, it's fun seeing you all fired up. Here at home and not... At work, you know. You know I can't always be home, Hana. I have a company to run, unless you've forgotten. I haven't forgotten. You're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. <laughs> and I soon were enough, a dog one day you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. Yeah, I know. True, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. Oh, ho, ho, cat lovers. Did you, did, you get, did you get triggered? I don't know. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess. I'm not Wet cleaning up smell? after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what the fudge? It's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sort of things. To joke around as if we were teenagers again, with very little problem in the way of responsibilities and roles. Oh, I miss those. I miss those times. Jesus. To hear this genu genuine, honest to goodness laughter is a rarity. This is just a second time as of late. And I can only see it as a sign, a signs of good things to come. All good points. I guess we could just have kids. That is, if you prefer dealing with soiled nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds, mice, and litter boxes. <laughs> I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing a line. Come on, Luke, why are you always dodging that topic? I didn't say that I'm a good comedian, did I? Not this again. Yeah, shit. Shut the fuck up, dude. What? I... I wasn't being serious. 
It's not something you take the piss out of. Why are you so pissed out about it? You see your husband and wife for seven fucking years. Get a kid. Having a kid is a big responsibility, Hana. I'm pretty sure it's not much of a responsibility compared to running a company, dude. Um, I don't know. You know, I know handling a kid is a much is too much work, but I think it's something that he at least Luke can handle. I don't know. We've talked about this, haven't we? Wait, we. Actually, wait. Now that you think about it, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be healthy for a kid. Yeah, sorry guys, sorry, sorry. Um, with Luke, as of uh, you know, with Luke's personality and his responsibility right now, if he has a kid, I don't think he'll be able to take care of him or her, and that's gonna be so sad for the for the child. Although they have um. Hannah on the on the house most of the time. It's still it's still different when you know your father isn't there. There's no far father figure at home or something like that. It just ends up with a really messed up family in most of the in most occasions. I should know. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Anyway, I'm getting personal now. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not ready to be a parent. I'd probably end up killing the little brat by the week's end. Yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> so what should I say? Ah, uh, you'll be a great father. I apologize for bringing it up. Well, I don't know. I'll be lying if I say that you'll be a great father, so I'll just be honest. I'll apologize for bringing it up. I feel guilty and easy even about bringing this topic up. This isn't the first time I brought it out there, considering we've been married for seven years. But I should have learned my lesson. Talking about it has always gotten me disapproval. After all, this is one of the surefire ways to get Luke into a terrible mood. I'm sorry, but I do think you... Don't finish that sentence, Hana. Just don't. <laughs> we know how this discussion ends. Let's not fight over what ifs and if onlys. But what if we are going to have a family, Luke? What then? I just told you. No what ifs. We won't talk about it until you're ready. Let's not talk about it then. Ever. Oh come on, dude. That the silence that follows is stifling. I have I avert my gaze from him, favoring the view of our four poster bed overseeing his embittered expression. Just thinking of how insensitive I am for bringing it up makes me feel sick to my stomach. We stay still. Neither of us dare make the first move to leave. Until a crash from downstairs cuts through the tension. Oh bloody hell, what is it now? I can't get away for ten minutes without someone mucking something up! That better not be what I think it is! I know it's only an 8 million yen vase, but I swear, I'll- I don't stop him as he storms off, and he doesn't even bother to look my way. Yet, I can still feel his eyes boring into me. Alone as per usual. I really should be used to it by now. I can feel the minutes tick by with me just lying there, feeling miserable and full of self-pity. I have rolled over to lie on my stomach at this point with my face buried into the pillows when there's a knock at the door. Grumbling at them to go away doesn't work as a voice comes from the other side. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. I really feel bad for Hannah. You know, if you're a mother and uh, you've been married for seven years, you would love, you would want to have a child. Okay, I know the feeling, girls. Don't worry. Your maternity and sex just kicks in. Uh, yeah, speaking personally, I would love a kid, okay? I've always wanted a family of my own, but I don't know. I think Luke is just too busy with his- he's just too- probably just too in love with his own work to have children or something like that. Can't blame him. I don't know. Wait, is that today? Oh, yes. Uh, people had caught wind of a uh, wind of our new mansion the very moment we left the open house. Luke had boasted he could acquire the property in no time and allowed a photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications and it took longer than it usually does for in us. In a minute, Hanzi! Johannes, Johannes, if you could at least make it through the end. <laughs> Tell them I'll be right down, Hanzi! The mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed up aside from the bedroom. Although it's still a work in progress, it had a promising start and I can already see the flower patches. Luke's favorite daffodil stands out easily having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter up the rooftop of our penthouse. Why, if the moving crew that thought uh, if the moving crew thought that Luke was being hard on them, they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out. 
The man looked like he was ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion. <laughs> it is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. He is hard to miss, the hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him mo look much larger. It is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. <laughs> you look... familiar. Have we met? I have a very wide social circle, so everyone looks famili familiar at one point or another. But one would think I'd remember someone who stands out like him. The struggle to recall must have been evident on my face as he quickly and kindly answers my question. Oh, I was with Isabella, your estate agent, when she had the house blessed. Oh yes, that's right! Oh yeah, what happened to Isabella after that? Jesus Christ. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> Should have known you were Ms. Wright. The one and only. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Maison de Wright. Maison de And yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. <laughs> Mr. Steele. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Mm? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. <laughs> Hana! If I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Wright. Hana. Hana. <laughs> Zachary proves quickly enough that I can in fact trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in the industry at the, in this I mean in this industry at the very least. He is a kind and courteous listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my ability and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one I ask what the bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Balls of fruit, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are bought in for a kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, and decorative soaps. There are, there are other things as well, too numerous to count all in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. No. Oh. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all of these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. Oh. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, oh. it better. Long exposure shots, yes. We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackle the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. The ballroom needs little preparation with its grand design, although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy, considering how Johannes kept the place so neat and sterile. One can practically eat off the floor. <laughs> we carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with the exception to the rooms which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek in his, photo in his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't know. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried about botched photographs. Wait, he uses film? I thought it was a DSLR. What the? Oh, that's peculiar. Hmm. I imagine photography must be a cathartic for him, judging by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. 
he even goes far as to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I asked about the technical aspects. You know what? That's something I actually want to learn. I don't know much about aperture and about shutter speeds. I just know the terms, but I don't know how it actually works and stuff like that. I would love to know more about it. I can't quite see the picture as it is made, much like when I watch artists paint, paint on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft such as this is exciting in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the ex exercise for the both of us. Oh, a little bit of photo shoot there. Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And have I not been paying attention? I wouldn't have even noticed. It is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. Whoa, what the fuck? His finger doesn't move to release the shutter. Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face, gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake and there is a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? No response. Zach? Is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before, before shaking his head. Turning around, though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, 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 there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Jesus. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. So Zachary can see the ghost girl as well, so he is cursed! Oh, shit. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Everything stops, and everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure... I don't know what just happened. It, it, it was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, Jesus. is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. For magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. Oh, uh, really? Uh, too bad, Zach. I think you're really good at it. At least, not all the time. Uh, I see. What is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose into other people's business, but I can't help but ask. I regret doing so as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air ha he has fades away. He looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films! Documentaries, mostly. Mm. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Foncy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. What does that mean? Very funny. <laughs> so, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Foncy is all about? He, ha he hesitates. But when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in, uh, he gives in and spills it all out. Blue Français, la fleur la plus sombre de nos Britanniques. I don't know how to fucking read that! Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. Ah, so it's about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> I'm sorry, why did I even make a joke about that? Ah! He speaks with passion of one of who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. Why, I would have told him that he is an amazing speaker if only I wasn't so engrossed listen listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in the workplace. Lesser chances for opportunity and higher chances of being treated like a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general still being treated like second-class citizens. All because of the color of their skin. It is all just positively riveting. And sad. It comes to a point wherein he soon loses steam and he looks abashed, realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and... It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion after all. That is true. I would... I really, really love, you know, seeing or reading posts in Facebook about, the, about different people's lives and the passion that they're doing to their work and stuff like that. It's really cool. You know, it gives you a taste of what kind of lives other people have. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. Yes. 
You do have very beautiful eyes. Oh, come on, Hannah, stop flirting. Uh huh. Thanks, I guess. I want to say that I understand where he's coming from, but I really don't, do I? I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I've lived a charmed life. It hasn't been perfect, but, this difficult, but the difficulties I've been through pales in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. Uh, that's what I like about Hannah, she's actually very empathetic in a way. She's self-aware of, of her privileges and uh, tries to, you know, tries to equal it down to whoever he, she speaks to. I certainly don't know how I would have fared were, were it any different. Would I still have met Luke and will he still have loved me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things you talk about, it sounds like you've... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? I live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our palm... Sorry, flat. Yeah, they call it flat. And well, the... I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. Mm. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around. But a pencil, a notebook would go missing, you know? Mm, that sucks. Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, it may be a slightly different story when you have a personal guard and the stolen item is not a pencil but an ex expensive hired loot. So what about you? How you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? Not big enough? <laughs> what? No, oh, don't be a bully. It's <laughs> just that. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like fragile porcelain, with nursemaids waiting to mummy hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for on a whim, and it will be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents, just goodbye kisses in the morning before they went off to who knows where, and they were needed to next. I should have read that a bit more. <laughs> I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. That's what I'm telling you guys about when, if, when, uh, so why Luke is so hesitant about this, you know. It's either he doesn't want a child because he just doesn't want to, or be maybe because he's just not ready for this, I'm not sure. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big halls, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. A pensive mood overcomes us, and there's a moment where neither of us are sure of how to go on from there. Things have gotten a bit too personal, yet it isn't wholly uncomfortable. Like as if we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. You'll make home out of it yet. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and extravagant, and just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photograph, you've covered the one and only Ermengarde mansion. Ermengarde What's next Ermengarde. on the agenda? The interview? Oh, there's an interview. Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. <laughs> and they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Honor Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah, <laughs> boring. Seems like Hannah's already had this kind of situation before. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi, The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Oh, a bit of plug in there. Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? <laughs> people, right? Oui. People are shite. Shit! What do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking looking taken aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to just go and say such a crass word. But he recovers quickly and after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. <laughs> so, the big boy knows French. You must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. <laughs> Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. Oui, oui. Oh, I, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry, but <laughs> I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Oh. Can you cook all your best? 
I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. He can even heat soup in a microwave. Say money, peak. It has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee is certainly not a good friend. <laughs> and although we've just met Zachary, he's the sort who can probably befriend anyone. He's just com a comfortable person to be around with. I know, right? A bit too comfortable. The photo shoot went by a breeze. And somewhere along the way, as we talk and laugh, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me this strange look until I back off, and he'll go back to asking questions after I agree to do his little interview. And it's just... odd. Well, no. Me being friendly isn't that odd, That's, that is how I am. Zach. Zachary is the one that's being odd. Why? Why, anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, all looks almost flustered about it. He should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, but he's a big boy. He should be able to handle me. All it was, all it is, is a friendly touch here, a pretty smile there, and gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. <laughs> You're such a flirt! <laughs> Come on. Am I being mean is it as if I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside. Where is this going? <laughs> oh god! If I can read in between the lines, I think Hannah kind of likes Zachary in a way, or she's just messing with him or trolling with him. I don't know. But there's definitely an interest in us in some sort of way. Mm. At least that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. <laughs> Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? I'm not sure if I want to, though. <laughs> what is it? What is happening here? Where is this gonna end up in? Should I continue teasing or stop it? I was gonna, you know what? If I was Hannah, I would continue teasing just for the fun of it. <laughs> this is who I am, and I am not going to tone myself down for somebody else. I have no obligation to do so. That sass. At any rate, he is rather cute, and it is a bit fun seeing him squirm. What's the worst that can happen? Well, maybe Luke can come barging in and then see you flirting with someone else or something like that. I don't know. Luke kind of hates people like Zach, if you know what I mean. All right. And you know what he said, you know, during the past episodes, he called Zach uh, that thing, that term. Anyway, I doubt it will be anything bad considering how much of a gentleman he is. Oh, stop doing what, Zach, sweetie? Oh, Hannah, you fucking thought they did joke, man. I still like Hannah. She's, that's just how she is, I guess. Touching my arm and looking at me like... <laughs> <laughs> I paused, giving him a baffled look. This is certainly the first time a man has ever complained about me being too friendly. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on now, don't be like that. It's just a bit of fun. Oh, come on. This is too much, Hannah. Jesus, a bit of harmless I'm fun. I'm sorry. It's just really uncomfortable. And, and and I don't think either of us want Mr. Wright to see us and think there's any funny business. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, can we just... We're finished with the interview already, aren't we? Maybe it's about time I go. Oh, you must be joking. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. You're certainly the odd one. Don't be such a killjoy. A little bit of flirting never hurt anyone. You know what? Guys, guys, I, I have to be... I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't expect Hannah to be... To to continue like this. I thought she was just going to be, uh, flirt a bit more and then stop. But she's just she's just really pushing it now. God, fuck. Um, guys, just a moment. I'm gonna go back. If there's one way... Uh, God, this just didn't work out. This isn't, the this isn't the choice I wanted to make. God, I was just really curious as to what would happen. Oh, God. I hope you guys don't hate me for this, but I'm just going to stop the kill. I don't want Zach. I just don't want Zach to be to feel uncomfortable or something like that. Jesus, I didn't expect that to be to carry on like this. Oh, God. Guys, I hope you I hope you guys um, forgive me, but I'm just going to change my choice to just stopping it, okay? I don't think any one of you guys want to see Hannah and Zach going at this kind of 
you know they were they started really good and then i just ruined it for everyone so uh i didn't expect this to happen so anyway i'm just gonna just wait okay okay here we go Again, guys, sorry. This is probably the last time I'm gonna change my choice. Okay, first and last time. I just didn't expect it to <laughs> go on like that. Jesus Christ, Hannah can be a, a bit too flirtatious in a way. So I'm gonna stop it. Okay, I didn't expect that. Jesus Christ, Hannah. I'll stop if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Sorry. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but... He gestures to the ring on my finger and lets the fact of the matter hang heavily between us. Being told implicitly that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. It was just going to be some harmless flirting, right? That's what all, that's what all those harlots say. Harmless flirting here and there and then it just gets worse and worse. I've seen it happen. Okay, guys. <laughs> All right. So you've never had a girlfriend? Hmm. See. No. No oh. boyfriend either. You know, just in case you were gonna ask for that <laughs> one next. And you haven't even had your first kiss. Hmm. Out of one, ma'am. Oh, really, Zach? Really surprised. Usually, women will go for this kind of guys. You know, big and really kind and gentle. Do you want to have your first kiss today? Come on, Han! I told you, stop flirting! Jesus Christ! Ah, uh, so whatever choice we make, she still teases him in every way. I can't help it. I really, really can't, and I'm going to apologize lots later. Surely, by the catty smile on my face, it's... It is obvious that I'm just pulling his leg. <laughs> the laugh I failed to contain certainly gives it away, if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lights up in embarrassment, stammering, and sputtering objections. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. <laughs> oh, he's like, it's really cute right now. I never All said right. I would kiss you, silly. Oh, your horns! <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, what? No, no! <laughs> Don't call your butler, she's Hana. <laughs> that would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. Oh! I know Hans, your Hans is just an extra character, but hey, this still surprised me. Turns out he's, he's one of the... Um, what are you doing here, man? Vanilla is here to ruin the moment that I'm doing. Okay. Anyway, so I didn't expect him to be. I didn't expect Johans to be. You know. Okay. Not not that gay. <laughs> okay. Not that there's a problem with being gay. It's just I thought of him as really a manly guy. I don't know. I do not think you can hear us from here either. But it is hard to think you're not taken, Zachary. Why? Whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs. No. Wonderful meals and wonderful memories. I can play guitar too. You can? Oh, oh. my. Wonderful serenades as well then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine, strapping young gentleman like yourself. Let's not get carried away. Besides, I gotta be going. It's getting late and I got someplace else to be. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope. For a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Just, you know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. <laughs> Alright, we're good there. As fate will have it, the very moment the words leave his mouth, Johannes comes out of the house. Judging by the slight raise of his, slight raise of his brows, he has heard only the tale of the end, tail end of the sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. But you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? So he's German. Ah. To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely placing him within the threshold of the foyer and under the roof of the house. <laughs> and just as ever, he quickly, to, uh, he is quick to return with a sardonic reply. I am now. As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Oh, what? No, I was just leaving, actually. So, you have a good night, Hana. And... You too, Hansy. Hansy. <laughs> it was nice to meet you, Zach, honey. You have a safe trip. He nods and the grin on his face as we say our goodbyes is the sweetest that I've ever seen. 
I linger, looking out for him with his relatively tiny bicycle, backpack safely secured in the basket by the front, and suitcase hooked to the back. I watched as he went down the path back to the Anselm village until he is nothing more than a blip in the horizon. I cannot help the small smile on my face as I go inside for supper. Alright, that is cool. So a bit of development there between Zack and Hannah. Not the kind of, you know, development that I'm hoping, that you guys are probably hoping for. So, you know, we don't want any, uh, you know, uh, complications with the relationship between Hannah and Luke to happen. Right, guys? So, <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. I, I, I lashed out at Vanilla because he was coming in the door or something like that. So if you guys want, were wondering who I, who the fuck I shouted at. So anyway, it's now night time and I guess I'm gonna end this episode right here, okay? So, um, one thing's for sure, Zack is also cursed. He saw the ghost girl and a bit choking Mrs. Wright as well. So, this is getting really itzy, if that's even a word. But, um, hmm, I don't know what's gonna happen now. It's night time. Oh shit, it's night time. In the fucking mansion. They're already staying in the mansion. <gasps> oh no. Time's just gonna happen next time. <laughs> Alright. You know what? I think I'm gonna continue this. I think things are gonna get interesting this tonight. Let me see. I'm gonna continue. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electric work is not up to par. But that clearly is not the case as every other room is bright with artificial light. Finding the light switch is a monumental task considering the size and my unfamiliarity with the room. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere. Eerie and frightening. Oh, it takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle and there is this distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me and only spurs me on in my search. And when I do open the lights, there is a hiss. <gasps> I'll turn the lights oh, Jesus down, fucking woman. Christ, Luke. There at the end of the hall is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. Perhaps I can let it go if it's only one glass of wine. However, I can feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. What is that? Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? Oh, shit. That's, that's a, that is kind of like a... A really strong kind of alcohol or more like a drug or something. I don't know. Shit. You know what the doctor said. Absent Luke. Are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car. Honeybee, buttercup. Not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch. Not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love, don't be mad. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. Okay, I think I was wrong about Amthinth. But whatever it is, it's, 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 it's too bad. It's really bad in, in large doses. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. <sighs> Let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? Oh, come on, dude. That is... That is... Ah, that sucks. If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. Oh, shit. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? What the... What the... I should tell the truth or I should tell a little lie? Huh. This is hard. Actually, I don't want to lie to him. And he, if he was informed that he was already, you know, in attending the... Uh, what do you call this? The... Our interview was done and we were hanging out with Zachary, then he will just say that I was lying or something. I should be honest with him. You know, I want an honest relationship. And if he's actually being honest and uh, that his drinking problem is connected to me, the fucking douchebag of a husband. God, I take it back. Luke, you suck. Fuck you, Luke. So I was with Zachary, Luke. I was talking so to Zachary. 
The photographer for Luxury Living? I have no reason to tell lies. It's not like I'm guilty of anything. Exactly! Why will you keep it? But as Luke's expression turns, he makes me feel like I actually am to blame for something. He has a way of making me laid bare with just a look. That had really struck me when we first met years that ago. That giant negro! You son of a bitch! You were having a secret meeting behind my back and it was with him? What are you implying? Yeah, what are you implying? I'm implying nothing. <sighs> I'm just worried. You know better than to trust those media types, Buttercup. He must have been really friendly to occupy your time like that. But all he's looking for is his next big headline. <laughs> he's a photographer for an interior design magazine. Doesn't matter. You let one little thing slip, one wrong move, and it'll blow up in the telly in the morning. He'll go to his journalist friends to gossip and make a quick quid. His eyes were the first thing I noticed about him. They were like a nature, the grass and the trees, wonderful and breathtaking. Now as I look at him, they're nothing but the same shade of green as the bloody damn drink in his hand. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Oh, oh god, where is, this, where is this conversation going? Oh, I don't like this. Excuse me again? We're talking about you, Hana. No, I am pretty sure we were talking about you and your drinking problem, Luke, right? Hangover forgotten during the course of this little spat, the man jumps to his feet and seizes. It looks like he's barely stomping himself from throwing the nearest thing he can find. Oh, it is not a problem. I can stop whenever I want. And even if it was, I think you can very well stay out of it, as it only affects my own kidneys or liver or whatever the bloody hell that shite pollutes. <laughs> whatever aftermath that occurs because of your little chit-chat with the Negro affects the both of us, however. Look, Luke. Nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Well, now I think I'm getting jealous. Green of jealousy. Well, I would be if it weren't for this damn headache. Maybe you should drink more. Maybe. <laughs> Supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served. Well, grander than usual anyway. Most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. A platter of native oysters for starters, and tranche of turbot with purple sprouting broccoli, lemon, capers, and anchovy sauce for mains. Oh, that was a hand, that was a mouthful. Okay, to finish it all off, black tea and a golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. But when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely in the lull of night, I sit in a house too big and too empty foreign and unwelcoming. Even with its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. There is no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I have faced before. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. To remind myself that this place is for Luke and for our future children uh, fills me with a renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. Oh shit, it's the bitch! The wailing is far away and muffled, yet at the same time it shakes me to my every core as I hear it. As if the suffering is just standing right beside me. Hearing it sends a chill down my spine and it makes my skin prickle with the goosebumps. Uh, who is that? Curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen. <laughs> Shit is about to go down, guys, and I am going to continue this on the next episode. Holy shit! Here it goes, guys. Hannah Wright. First freaking legit encounter with this ghost bitch. Well, hopefully. Alright, I'm sorry to cut it here, guys, but... You gotta leave something to excite you, right? Yeah, boy! I'll see you guys next time, alright? And hopefully, we'll see something interesting. See you next time. Bye!